Surprise! This is a drum throne, and this is an old canister drum throne that uh, Slingerland and uh, some of the other manufacturers made years ago. And the only reason why I'm talking about that is because a drum throne is where we sit. And many of you had asked, uh, how high do I sit? Um, because in the first video we discussed the posture and, and how it made a difference in, in playing with the bass drum. But this is an old Slingerland canister, uh, drum throne, Koopa throne. And uh, the height of this is 24 inches. And you can compare it to the bass drum, which is 24 inches as well. So this is the height, and this is the height that I sit. Well, now we're back to the drum set. Um, I just wanted to spend some time at the practice pad because uh, of the mechanics that's involved, all right? Uh, this is the instrument that we perform on, uh, that we play on, but uh, there are mechanics that are involved. <clears throat> I'd like to talk about moving around the drum set and uh, what I practiced and how I practiced to, uh, to move around the drums. Uh, first of all, what's very important is the height. And as you can see with my arms naturally at my side, the height of the snare drum. It's not too low, it's not too high. Uh, when I'm playing, my arms are naturally at, at their sides. And playing fast and playing relaxed, it's very important to play naturally and relaxed. And that's what Buddy did. Um, Buddy had his drums set up in a fashion that was natural and relaxing to him, just as you should uh, set them up for yourself, okay? Since we all are different physically because of our height and what have you, um, no two people are going to sit behind or set up a set of drums exactly the same way. But a drum set should fit you like an article of clothing should. You should feel comfortable behind the drum set. Buddy had his drums uh, pretty much close to him uh, so that there was very little wasted motion. And the heights of the drums were within a few inches of each other. <clears throat> You'll notice that my snare drum and my floor tom are almost level. Now there were times during Buddy's career where they were a little bit higher, a little bit lower, or he had the, the pitch of his snare drum a little bit greater than the others, but you'll notice that they're level. And uh, that's very important. One of the things that I used to practice in moving around the drum set was just making individual strokes with each hand. And I would try to devise as many different patterns as possible in moving around. So <clears throat> one of the first ways we can move around the drum set is in a clockwise position. So what I'm going to do is one hand at a time. I'm going to concentrate on each drum. I'm going to concentrate on the center of each drum. And I'm going to make a motion. So for an example, we'll just start with the right hand. And we're going to make a clockwise motion. I'll do it with the left hand.
do counterclockwise. on each individual hand <clears throat> making those types of motions when you play patterns you're going to move around the drum set much easily and again once again remember that the height is very important and how close you have the drums together now there are all kinds of different combinations that you can make between going from the snare drum to the small tom or the snare drum to the floor tom or the snare drum uh, to either tom uh, so if you practice those different patterns, it'll help you to move around the drum set more quickly. Give an example just between the snare drum and the small tom. play a pattern it'll be that much quicker same thing with the snare drum to the floor tom and one of the things that I had touched on in the first video was the fact that buddy uh, believed that it wasn't not necessarily just your arm motions but in playing quickly that if your wrist was flexible enough you could make a, a wrist motion but you can practice both arms and wrists motion, now a wrist motion. And I must add that it's less tiring to play it this way than it is to play it with the entire arm. the center of the drum. You're not always going to hit it, but always strive to try to hit that. If you practice that way individually with each hand, the right hand and the left hand, like I said, it'll make it much easier for you when you want to move playing patterns around the drums. And that was the way I practiced to uh, increase my movement around the speed. Have the drums as close as they can be comfortably, have them at a height, which is very similar to that of the snare drum, okay? And you'll find that the easier you make it, so, make it for yourself to play, the faster you'll play and the more relaxed you play. And uh, that's what Buddy always did. Many of you had uh, commented on uh, a lot of the patterns that 
I had showed you that uh, Buddy played in the very first video. And uh, I know that you'd like some more. So uh, we're going to play some more patterns that uh, Buddy used over his, his lifetime. Um, Buddy, as I had mentioned on the first video, was a great snare drum artist. And uh, much of what he played, uh, he used to like to play triplets. He used to like to play uh, six-stroke rolls. So I'm just going to uh, show you some individual little patterns or licks that he played. How you put them together is, uh, is up to you. But they're like letters of the alphabet. The more letters that you know, the more words that you can spell. Um, so another pattern or lick that Buddy used to play could revolve, could be uh, revolved as a six-stroke roll, or uh, it could be considered a triplet or, or the triplet pattern. All right, <clears throat> and Buddy used to do things between his bass drum and the snare drum. So this one particular pattern that I would like to show you uh, consists of four single strokes on the bass on the snare drum right, left, right, left, and two on the bass drum. So very slowly it consists of this. It's to that in playing a triplet. Another would be alternating right and left hands with the bass drum. And he used to get fancy and he would make a sideward motion. It really didn't affect the playing of the particular lick. It was just uh, more visual than anything else, but it's right, left, Foot right left or bass drum right left. And then bass drum left right. Now also playing off of that, we can move that around the drum. Say using the snare drum and the floor tom tom. So it's it's the same pattern using the four strokes with the hands, but it's alternating uh, the drums. So going back to the uh, bass drum and just the two strokes, the triplet. So it's bass drum right left, foot right left. Foot right. Now we can move that around the drum set. alternating but it's playing a that type of a pattern and you can work that out. Buddy also used to do a pattern that <clears throat> went between the small tom tom and the floor tom tom and it was a crossover.
also used to play uh, triplet patterns between the snare drum and the floor tom or the snare drum and the small tom. like to play variations just on the snare drum. Uh, they're triplet patterns or they could be referred to as six stroke rolls. Now that pattern would be just like playing a jazz, uh, the rights or the swing beat on a cymbal with the right hand. patterns or uh, uh, six stroke rolls as uh, they could be called. All right, <clears throat> Buddy also used to do a thing with uh, drags, uh, played uh, specific patterns such as uh, this. So it's like two quick rights and a left. be used on the cymbals as well. Uh, it's so that is that's the sticking and then we're going to do some crossovers. likes to use that one. It's um, actually visually exciting because you're doing the crossovers, <laughs> but the actual sticking is nothing more than right, right, left. <clears throat> so that's another one of uh, Buddy's uh, symbol licks. He's a master of uh, playing uh, intricate patterns on the uh, hi-hat. And uh, he used to play on top and underneath. Some of the uh, patterns we had discussed on the first video with the triplets and what have you. Uh, but he also used to play like singles and doubles and uh, these are things that uh, it's taken years and years to master and I'm still working on them myself. But um, a lot of guys wanted to know uh, what was being done on the hi-hat. Um, <clears throat> Buddy held the stick with his two fingers, like such, and he would be making an upward motion. Now, he 
kept his thumb on top of the hi-hat cymbal. And he basically just used, whether it be a, a single stroke roll, or uh, doubles, or combinations of singles and doubles. I find it easier just to have complete control of the drumstick and I keep my thumb on the stick itself. And I work on patterns such as playing singles. playing singles and doubles. And that's a sticking that's right, left, uh, right, left, right, right, left, left. Uh, or the same pattern that we were talking about, uh, it's actually a six stroke roll that uh, this works well on the hi-hat because it's playing time anyway. begin his hi-hat routine with uh, just a pattern of playing quarter notes but opening and closing the hi-hat. So he would begin it like... I like the freedom of not having my thumb on the top symbol, but, but he played that way. So whatever works well for you is the way you should do it, but those are just some of the uh, ideas or, or rhythmic patterns that Buddy used on the hi-hat. I'd like to spend a little time again on bass drum technique. Uh, a lot of you had asked me what I had done to develop uh, bass drum technique. The most important thing, again, is in your posture. When I'm sitting at an elevation that allows my knee to be slightly lower than my hip, it's an angle down, and my lower leg is slightly forward, it allows me full control of my leg, of my foot, without any tension in the ankle. And basically what I used to practice on, uh, practice was playing quarter notes, eighth notes, and different types of patterns. You need to work uh, just solely on the bass drum pedal as you would in practicing with your hands. One important thing that Buddy always did was he rolled up his uh, pants leg because you certainly don't want uh, the beater to get caught or rip your, rip your pants. So in practicing, uh, say, quarter notes, going to quarter notes and eighth notes. Uh, sometimes I'll play with my heel down. I used to practice basically with my heel down. Um, and we'll just play some patterns that uh, you can build up yourself. So we'll play a, a pattern of quarter notes uh, and then switch to eighth notes.
such. Uh, also, you could play quarter notes and then go to triplets. on different uh, patterns, rhythmic patterns, where uh, you can develop the bass drum. Two books that uh, I developed, or that, not that I developed, but I worked on, um, one was uh, Ted Reed's Progressive Steps to Bass Drum Technique. There are, are many uh, patterns in here that are worthwhile uh, in helping you develop your bass drum technique. And another book that I had worked on uh, was by John Lombardi in the collaboration with Charles Perry, and this is uh, Rock and Bass Drum. Uh, you can do whatever you want. You can take the bass drum to whatever extremes that you want. You just have to, to spend the time and develop it and work on it just as you would when you're working with your hands. Uh, I again mentioned in the first video that Buddy used to, at some times, he would lift his heel uh, and work with the rebound uh, to play the faster tempos, and that's something that you need to develop and work on as well. But so when I play at that tempo, there's no tension on my ankle whatsoever, and it's just a matter of control and conditioning. Again, but he always used a wooden beater. He never used cork or felt. It just gives more. Have uh, 